Hi guys, my name is Tammy Moniz and I'm with Surfers in Residence at the Outrigger Waikiki on the beach. And today we have a special guest here, my friend Kelly Slater. Welcome. Thank you. To Outrigger Good to Waikiki. Be here. Yeah, I'm so stoked. Thanks for coming. No it was problem. very special of you to take the time out to, you know, come here and talk with me. No problem. Yeah. Well, um, Kelly, if you guys don't know, this guy is a super special guy. Um, I know a lot of what we talk about is the history of surfing and um you know what it means to hawaii and, and do kanamoku and um or the kings and queens it's a sport of kings and queens but um what kelly here sitting here has done for surfing professional surfing in the last decades few decades <laughs> how many decades <laughs> <laughs> Been around a while. I've been around hey, a while. Hey, I watched Tony Moniz in the 80s in Florida yeah. surfing contest at Singer Island. Right? Yeah. That's my husband. And we still, you, I think you had a, it autographed something. Yeah? I got it. Yeah, 1980, uh, 1982, I think I got Tony's yeah. autograph. And how old were you? You were old. 10? Yeah, I saw that little yeah. smiley face, Tony Moniz yeah. smiley face. Well, um, <laughs> what's what's special about this guy is, um, and many things are special about him, but right now just, um, he is really, for me, I've watched surfing professional surfing transform and um kelly you've been like um i think you're really in your teenage years when i kind of you know started dating tony and so i watched you become this you know young star that was that could have went on tour quickly in probably where you're 16 17 or so i don't know you were pretty young right? I, yeah i got on tour when i was 19. you were 19 yeah. but you could have i remember that you could have but you didn't because you wanted to finish school or your mom went, what was that about? I didn't because I finished school. You know, like when oh, you're you in school, school? Oh. Well, when you're in school, you know, you're like, yeah. oh, gosh, I want to go. You know, yes, I, I actually course. wanted to move to, to Huntington, mm. strangely enough. Not that I love Huntington Beach. No offense, Huntington Beach. But uh, uh, they had a surf program in the school. Uh, and so I thought, oh, I can go out there. I can get more surf time in. Plus, mm -hmm. there's more waves and all that kind of thing. We didn't really have that kind of curriculum in Florida mm -hmm. at the time. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to finish high school, um, graduate with all my friends I grew up with and all that stuff. And so I did that and then went on tour in 91. I was 19 years old and been going ever since pretty much. Yeah, it's it's been going on um, for a long time and you've been not only going, but you've been going in a big way. Um, like I've watched surfing's whole, like, rules and um judging system has changed dramatically and mm. i think you've been a big part of a lot of it um you want to share like what part you know your your input into um surfing to make it the way it is now where why and why it's beneficial to yeah well i think all the surfers that come on tour all the young guys they, mm -hmm. there's a i don't know if there's such an obligation early on but i think it's important to get involved with your sport and understand obviously you have to understand all the rules and reasons mm -hmm. that were made and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff so you know how to interact within the sport but mm -hmm. <clears throat> also where is it going mm -hmm. and i think that's the really key important thing for younger surfers or younger mm -hmm. people in sports is to to help guide the rules for surfing as the scoring mm -hmm. because that's you know the guys who are who are determining what good surfing is and what great surfing is mm -hmm. those are the young guys that are coming up they see what the future is mm -hmm. before it happens right mm -hmm. so i think it's important to get involved within those conversations early on um, to get too involved in all the politics and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. is like not important until you're kind of mm -hmm. a little older. Uh, so, you know, formulating what your sport is mm -hmm. while you're in your career is important. It, 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 if you've waited too long, it's going to be too long and, mm -hmm. and it's somebody younger than you is going to kind of come and dictate what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a fine balance there. You don't want to get too involved because yeah. you want to focus on your your sport so just mm -hmm. i've always i've always tried to throw ideas to mm -hmm. the tour and mm -hmm. associations to to improve what we're doing to make it more visible or mm -hmm. um look when our generation came along what mm -hmm. we're now coined the momentum generation yeah when was that uh that was well taylor Steele started making movies of us in the late mm -hmm. well early 90s mm -hmm. and uh and his first movie was Momentum, and that had all those us guys in it. And so our generation 
really saw a, a pretty drastic difference from what the generation before us was surf style, surf wise. That was really the time where it went, there was kind of a line in the sand. You either could do aerials or you couldn't. Nowadays, everyone does, you know, and everyone has to be able to. But back then it was like, you were either kind of the old school power carving mm -hmm. tube rider, um, or you, you, were, you were taking that and transitioning it to the air also. Mm -hmm. So there was a there was important conversations for us going on then to to, to try to bring the judges up to speed with mm -hmm. where it was going and what it was and what the difficulty levels were and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, and that and that keeps evolving. Yeah, and I've I've watched that happen. It's it's been really um, really really awesome watching all that progression and knowing that you're having these conversations. You mm. know, like I I remember too like. Um, and it doesn't surprise me that you, even if you're, you know, 11 time world champ and um, is there anybody that has more titles than you, world ch titles in sports? Oh, in sports? Yeah, um, yeah there are. There's, um, I don't know them all, but yeah. I mean, you, you look at someone like Phelps. Those are, I don't know if you call each one a world title or not, mm -hmm. but he won 20 something gold oh, medals, uh -huh. you know, um, but there's, there are. Like Robbie Nash has twenty something in windsurfing, and there's three or four different types of uh, titles they could win yeah. per year or, or events. Yeah. Um, well, and you some have they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, it's it, it's it's uh, I don't know. It's it's I, I think you I, I think with sports you have to kind of compare apples to apples. You mm -hmm. know, like surfing to surfing and other sports to themselves. Mm -hmm. It's it's even uh, it, it's a lot more complex conversation to compare different sports than it is even like Muhammad Ali against Mike Tyson or mm -hmm. like that's in the same sport, same weight class, different generations. Mm -hmm. Now you try to compare a, a sport to a different sport yeah. and a different weight class and yeah. a different generation and all these things. It's, it's, it's kind of a moot point really. It's, there's no uh, final say in those things. Yeah. It's, it's easier with, you know, who ran the fastest ever 100 meters. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that kind right. of thing. Or, well, there's yeah. brilliance in it. And I think <coughs> that your brilliance isn't just in surfing and translating these things to, to up our sport, you know, but it's also, um, I remember, I don't know when it was, but um, you wrote, there was a, um, it was in Surfer Surfing and you guys were talking about um, politics and, and you had written something about whoever was going to, our leader, um, our, our next president or what you thought. And I just, I remember reading it and going, wow, okay, that's coming from a, like, that's coming from your, your mind and how you translate um, and, and, you know, all that information you knew and then you, and you put it, it was on paper and it was really, really amazing. Like, so it, it showed, it showed me that there's this brilliance about you as well, you know, as you're, you are world champ and you have the skills and the talent to do that, but you also have the mind, you know? Um, so how, how does your mind Maybe I'm just you? opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be too, but I mean, like I no, would, I, I study, I study a lot of things. I think it's important. You know, I, I didn't love school cause I was a kid who wanted to get out of school and go surfing mm -hmm. and play sports and do things at home with my mm -hmm. friends, you know, but I thought it was important to be educated. And it's funny because when I think about school and education, something that Mike Stewart said, um, who's, I think Mike has like 10 world titles in bodyboarding. Mm -hmm. um, but something that Mike said always rang true to me. He said, school's easy. If you can't finish school, then there's a lot of other things that are harder in life. You're not going to be able to finish. Mm -hmm. And it's, it always kind of rang true for me. I, Cause Mike was like, even though he's a bodyboarder mm -hmm. and bodyboarding and surfing are so displaced from each other at this point, mm -hmm. Mike in the eighties was like a big surf star. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he was, he was getting double page spreads in surfing magazines, mm -hmm. uh, not bodyboard magazines. And, um, I always thought of him as like a revolutionary type surfer. I, I put him in my top three or five ever at Pipeline. Really? Um, and, but he also has a really, uh, he, he's really intrigued and interested in a lot of different subjects. Like he likes to try and invent things and um, uh, not, n not just within surfing. You know, I remember hearing he had this invention where it would take the wind power from all the cars driving by on the freeway and create no. energy, no. like things like that. Really? So he was always thinking kind of out of the box wow. and um, no one was thinking about that in the eighties or nineties really. And, and let alone talking about it in surfing or in our world. So I think it's important to, to be as educated as you can be in 
every area that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. and, and even in things you're not really that interested in, you know, history doesn't seem like something that a surfer would need, mm -hmm. but at some point in your life, you're gonna find that it, it falls into a conversation that maybe you'd like to be a part of. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that makes people more interested in who you are. Mm -hmm. So you never know the impact you have yeah. based on, the, you know, the more knowledge you have about things, the more questions you ask, mm -hmm. I think the better you sort of fit into lots of different conversations in, in your life. Yeah, I mean, your world is big. You know, it's not just surfing, but uh, you know, you have friends all over the world and uh, in all kind of diverse, you know, um, you know. A lot sports. of sport and stuff. I'm, I'm super interested and, and very entrenched in golf, um, jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. mixed martial arts, um, music, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those things I'm really, I'm just super passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or love them as a fan, mm -hmm. um, whether I'm doing them myself or, or just watching. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, that excites me. It just, I, for whatever reason, those things appeal to me. And, and you wouldn't think that surfing and golf and jujitsu yeah. all kind of go together or mix martial arts, but there, uh, you know, there's, there are these through lines. There are these things that, that um, relate f from one to another somehow. Well, and what do you think it is? Like, what is one thing that could, you can, you find relation? You want um, to win? <laughs> no, just the challenge of, of, of um, understanding the environment. You know, in surfing, you're on a wave. Mm -hmm. And when I ride a wave, I'm sure it's different from what everyone else sees. You know, everyone's got their own impression of what they're looking at. But you look for little bumps and sections and speed and blah, blah. And you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I create this pattern of, of, of speed and, and turns that all fits in to properly utilize this energy that's traveled thousands of miles, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, that's something spiritual wow. and that's something that, you know, you have to respect because the more you respect it, the more aware you are of what it's providing for you. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Cunningham was one of my sort of heroes, you know, mm -hmm. and he's oh, become nice. a very good friend of mine over the years. And I remember reading about Mark before we ever met each other and I was a little kid. And, oh, him and Jerry, the only two guys out of the second reef pipeline, you know, mm -hmm. these kind of old um, legendary okay. stories. And I got to become really good friends with, with Mark. And I started body surfing a lot. Me and Keone Watson and Strider Wazalewski, we used to go out and body surf when it was like second reef pipe. We'd go to the end of the inside bowl and we would body surf with no fins. Mm -hmm. And... Um, especially in those big west swells with a lot of energy moving down the beach. And so we'd finish our body surf and we'd get swept all the way down towards Pupakea and we'd come running up the beach and he'd come down. He was still lifeguarding a pipeline and he'd come down and yell at us, what are you guys doing? Where's your fins at? You know? And I go, and he's like, why don't you guys ever wear fins? And I said, well, what are we going to do when we lose our board? Got to swim in, wow. got to be comfortable. He's like, oh, I didn't think about it like that. But one thing Mark always said to me, <clears throat> he liked it. He said he liked the way I surf pipeline not because of my tube riding or any of that. He said he liked that I didn't kick out after I passed the body surfers. He goes, oh. it makes me, he goes, nothing makes me more frustrated than when I, when a surfer goes past me and just kicks out and doesn't ride the rest of the wave. He goes, I see you ride those waves all the way down to Aokai and you know, you use all that energy and you know, if, if I'm not going to get it, I want somebody to use it the oh, whole that's way. So interesting. And so when you, when you body surf, mm. you know, I'll, I'll go out a pipeline and I can get sets, you know, I can, I'm up there in the pack and mm -hmm. I get my waves or whatever. But when I go body surf, I'm instantly at the bottom of the pecking order, right? I'm instantly down. I'm like hitting the trash. <laughs> I wish I could and, see that. Yeah. I like and to see that. Actually. So I went out there. I went out there recently, and it was like a small day, and I was body surfing, and and uh, I was thinking, okay, like I'm on the shoulder from like the beginner body boarders, and like uh -huh. the, you know the, the waves are only like head high this day. And I was thinking, man, I can't even get a wave. How frustrating is this? But I can go out a ten foot dead pipe and get a big barrel. And, um, so it, I want to see that. You, you know, I, I think sense? I think those kind of things are a good way to humble yeah. yourself, and and then you you respect the the ride you get, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. uh, but Mark saying that to me when I was maybe twenty years old, it made me feel good because I was like, oh, one of my heroes mm -hmm. is kind of checking me out and seeing what I'm doing. But he also mm -hmm. kind of taught me a lesson by saying nice. that. Nice. And I always keep that in mind, especially in those real west swells at Pipeline where the wave keeps going. Thank I'm like, I'm not kicking out before the sandbar. <laughs> those are like the be best novelty waves out there. That is awesome. So, um, pop pipe is uh, obviously one of your favorite waves. Yeah. Um, what do you, as far as when you're on the surfboard, why, why don't you kind of share with us what do you feel? You know, what are you feeling? What do I feel? 
Like, why is it your favorite wave? And what is that feeling that... It's, uh, when I was a little kid, there's, I had a friend named Troy, and his dad had a surf shop up uh, about a, two blocks from my house. And we were on a surf team together when I was about 10. And he, he was a little older. But anyways, we used, to, we used to surf a lot together. I stayed at his house, and he had this poster on his wall of Pipeline. And I think it might have been Jackie Dunn. I'm not positive, but there was a goofy footer taken off on a wave at Pipeline. There was a wind blowing up the face, and it would have been like the first wave of the set because it was real. You could see the ridges, ridges from the trade wind coming up the face. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I look at it now, and the wave doesn't look scary at all. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, I was like, oh, my gosh, I wonder if I'll ever ride a wave like that in my life. And so I fantasized about it for years, and probably for three or four years before I ever went to Pipeline, I... Of course, I had soaked up every surf magazine there was from the time I was probably, I probably really started re reading magazines when I was about seven, six or seven. But thinking about Pipeline and the reality that I'm going to go to Hawaii, I'm going to get to see Pipeline one day. And having all that buildup inside as a little kid, just all the nerves. When I finally got here in 1984, the first day I got here, we, we landed at night. Matt Keckley picked my brother and I up. And, we asked him, we basically begged him, take, drive us to Pipeline. We want to go on the beach and look at Pipeline. And it was a full moon, and Joey Brand had won the Pipe Masters that oh, day, wow. 1984. Yeah. And, uh, and we got to, like, in the moonlight, you could see the wave. So the, the next morning, we first thing got up in the morning. We were just so excited to get down there. We come down to Pipeline, and we're walking up the trail, and Joey Brand's coming back from, from the beach. And... He stops and talks to us, and um, it was such a thrill for us, you know. Yeah. Wait, how guy, old were you? I was 12. 12. And I just, this guy just won the Pipe Masters, yeah. you know, and he's sitting there talking to us today. It was oh. so cool. And sat on the beach and watched the waves. But it was always, you know, pipelines are mecca. Mm -hmm. And for all surfers, I, I think there's always the Chopos and the, the, the Mentawai Islands and the Point Breaks in Australia mm -hmm. or, you know, some big wave like Nazare or Jaws. Mm -hmm. But pipeline's the mecca for surfers. It's mm -hmm. the... It's kind of, it, it, it's, there's a lot of bigger ways, but it's sort of the ultimate challenge because you can still ride deep in a barrel on a wave that can kill you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's sort of this like perfect blend of fun and, and fear. Yeah. And, um, uh, and it used to be thought, it all, I think back in the sixties, it was probably fifties or sixties. It was probably thought of like the, the, that was like the unwritten realm. Like, can we ever do that? And now, um, it sort of needs to be a, a really good, exciting, perfect big day to be mm -hmm. that interesting. Mm -hmm. If you've mm -hmm. spent 30, 40 right. years in the right. water there, right. but that challenge never stops. Yeah. You know, you still go out there with the butterflies in your stomach the first session or mm -hmm. any good big day. Pipeline's just kind of where it's at, you know. What, what's your worst, like, um, experience out there? Worst surfer? experience? Oh, uh, like, three-hour session not getting a wave oh. <laughs> that's the worst you'll take the beatings i'll take the beatings over that when was know. that no i'm kidding I'm, i've never not got a wave but okay. I've, I've gone i've definitely been out there that long and not got a good one yeah i had a couple i had that happen this winter a couple of times oh. it's so frustrating it's so fr it's so crowded now you yeah. know everyone wants their wave so yeah. it's doggy dog and it's just kind of the way it is mm -hmm. but um probably my scariest Probably the scariest thing that ever happened to me out there. I was 19. It was the first year I surfed the Triple Crown. Mm -hmm. And I, <clears throat> I was pounding for a wave, and Simon Law was next to me. He was an Australian guy that was on tour. Si you would have surfed against Simon mm -hmm. back in the day, Tony. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were pounding for the wave, and, and I'm looking back at him, not looking down the line. I had already judged, like, I want this wave. Mm -hmm. And I could see, I think he was going to miss it. And he backs out and yells at me, go, you know. <laughs> Called me a... Some kind Some of name. <laughs> Go use something. And I just took off. I didn't even think. I just stood up and I, because I had already thought, like, this is a good one. And I stood up and I went, oh, no. And I was like, I was already committed to this closeout. Uh, Maybe it was okay on the end, but I was way too deep. And it, and uh, I, was, I was a little too deep on the reef and stuff. And it, it was really dangerous wave. And the whole thing just compressed me. And I hit my head on the water and it kind of knocked me out. And... I went over, the, I remember going over the falls, my head kind of ringing, but I was like not really coherent. Mm -hmm. And I came down, I hit the reef a couple times, just kind of 
like a really violent, violent wipeout. And I remember coming up just going, oh, man, I'm just glad I'm conscious. Mm -hmm. And my board was broken in half, and each half was broken in half, and two fins oh. were broken. Oh. And it was like a really crazy wipeout. And I, uh, it, seeing the board, you could tell how yeah. gnarly the wave was. So I ran up the beach, and my brother was caddying for me. And he hands me a board. He's like, yeah, don't do that again. What do you? I'm like, you think I want to do that? <laughs> And, uh, but it was, it's, it's also clearly etched in my mind. I remember pulling and I can see the shape of the wave and the intensity of it and everything. And that's kind of, that's just what pipeline does to you. I can, if I had a video of every wave I've ever caught out there, I might remember almost not all of them, you know, or like 90% really? of them. Yeah. Just do, do you learn how to fall better? Like, I mean, yeah. that was obviously yeah, yeah. if that's your 19 and that was your worst wipe out and you've been yeah. surfing that for decades. So like, yeah, you, you totally to learn how to fall better. You learn which ones you need to dive off and dive down inside the face. Mm -hmm. Other ones you can ride out and fall deep in the tube, but mm -hmm. it just depends on the shape and the speed you have and all that kind of stuff. But you, you start to understand where all that energy is going, and it really is like a tornado or a hurricane. Like mm -hmm. the eye wall is the intense part, and everything out beyond that is like mm -hmm. sort of getting safer and safer. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're not in the beginning of where the lip's pitching, you're mm -hmm. generally okay. Like if that lip lands and you fall in the face there and get sucked over, you, Generally, you're going to be okay because a lot of the energy is used. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I think understanding how to fall is really, really, really important. And um, Tony, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you take off and ride switch foot, when, you, <laughs> when I fall, when I go switch foot and I fall, I have terrible wipeouts because I don't know how to make my body move the other way. I know how to lead with this shoulder and dive that way. It's really, it's really a, I think it's a, a really. Um, highly tuned skill you learn is how to wipe out mm -hmm. and how to swim in that energy um, based on what you've done forever. But yeah. I think that's, I think that's helped me not get hurt so much because mm -hmm. I, I just, sometimes you got to be right where the intense part is and you know that as long as you're right next to it, you're going to be kind of safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing at pipeline is when, a, if a wave breaks right in front of you, mm -hmm. just stay on the surface. I don't try to dive under cause that ener you're going to meet that energy going down, you know? So sometimes I just stay on the surface and I go pop right over the wave. Oh. And that energy is, there's a, there's a small space where the energy, where the, the, the intensity of the wave is, is super dangerous. Mm -hmm. But that means that the spot just near that is going to be pretty safe, really? relatively. Yeah, because oh. Pipeline uses a lot of his energy in the initial break. So mm -hmm. you can be 20 yards in and be fine. Mm -hmm. So what is that feeling like when you get the barrel? Like, you know, I mean, I've seen you catch. Well, you tell resilient. me, Sir French lady. Well, we haven't. We just listened to talk about that yet because we're going to talk about it. The last thing I have that on my list. Wait for the last stories. That's good. Uh, I blew the cover. You did. <laughs> you can edit okay, that. So, edit out her hitting me too. So, um, so tell us, people that maybe got barreled once in their life. <clears throat> yeah. Or none. Um, what it's like. Why do you guys chase after that? I mean, every surfer wants yeah. a barrel. Why? I, I don't know. I guess yeah, you could make a really uh, great argument that that surfing itself, but specifically big barrels or a barrel mm -hmm. is a drug, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something you just can't get enough of. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily it's healthy. Well, what do you, you feel know? though? Why, why is it that? Like, why it, is it that? I, I, it just alerts all your senses especially your visuals mm -hmm. but you, everything seems to slow down because you become so aware of what's mm -hmm. happening around you and i think there's some euphoric thing in that that can't be replicated mm -hmm. any other way mm -hmm. like literally nothing else mm -hmm. can can make you feel like that does and um yeah i i somebody asked me about that recently and i said i wonder you know my buddies drew and johnny i grew up with that don't surf i'm like i wonder if they ever feel that in their whole lifetime you know like oh, that feeling. catching a football, like serving an ace at tennis or what, you know, things they do. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way those things feel as good. It's just mm -hmm. there's something about surfing and just being part of what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the elements that mm -hmm. is um, irreplaceable with anything else. Because it's just that little moment, that one little moment, you know, <clears throat> that whole time you're out there mm -hmm. waiting and yeah. waiting for that one yeah. little moment, really. Yeah, yeah. It could be hours and then you get a five second long ride that's like you remember your and whole life. So, yeah. 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 It's... So um, before we go on to um, more personal issues here. Um, oh, we're I, going there. Huh? Yeah, we're going. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Personal <laughs> issues. Not personal <laughs> issues. Personal, like, you know, me and you friendship. Um, 
experiences, yes. you know, right? So, um, but you have um, you you have your hands in a lot of things. You know, one of it is outer known, and it's um, you know, you, it's. Um, can you share with us why you did that and what's important with how, how you built your brand mm -hmm. and what that brand, um, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was sponsored for 30 years by mm -hmm. clothing companies mm -hmm. and made my living from that mm -hmm. and started to realize I didn't know much about the whole mm -hmm. process, the supply chain and who was making the clothes and the mm -hmm. factories we use and where the textiles come from and the effect on the environment. I didn't know all these things. And as Twitter and social media became a thing in, in the late 2000s, around 2010, I was really active in reading a lot of um, accounts that were talking about this kind of stuff and like slave labor specifically. And mm -hmm. I wanted, it's funny because I'm not crazy passionate about clothing. Like mm -hmm. I don't care. I wear a t-shirt and shorts, you know, that's mm -hmm. my thing. I don't like, I just want to stay no slippers and I don't even have <coughs> slippers today. <laughs> no, I'm actually making some right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sort of passionate about slippers. It's just funny, <laughs> but clothing specifically, I'm not super passionate about, but I'm passionate about the, the industry and about, about, um, more about this process. Hmm. Um, so to me, the important thing when making Outer Known was that uh, we have a thing called for people and planet. And so for me, the um, social compliance, like taking care of the factory workers, making sure hmm. that they have a clean, healthy place to work. Hmm. Um, they work the right amount of hours. They have a living wage. Hmm. Um, all those things were, that was, to me, that was the focal point for creating a company. Hmm. And um, we have a, a specific person in Outer Known. Um, it's a new person now, but when we started, um, a, a woman would go to every single factory we would work with around the world and make sure that not only was it on paper, but she saw what the conditions were like. Wow. I mean, there's just things you you don't learn about mm -hmm. clothing, like the fact that some people will be basically held hostage to work 16-hour days. Mm -hmm. They don't they rarely get like a bathroom break or it's not a clean work environment or it's not safe. Mm -hmm. um, they'll take their passport so that they could never leave the workplace, that kind of thing. It, really? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of wild when you start to learn mm -hmm. and see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So to me that when I started to learn those things, uh, that became the most important thing for me. Wow. And then, um, you know, I would say basically in line with that was the, the environmental impact of um, mm -hmm. doing clothing. And um, there's there's a there's a crazy statistic I don't know offhand, but if you if you heard how much waste from the clothing industries mm -hmm. goes into landfills, like every single minute, it's like the size of a f football field every minute, mm -hmm. nonstop forever, mm -hmm. is always going into landfills. Mm -hmm. It's it's an astounding amount of waste mm -hmm. that gets created. So those are things that we wanted to address. Um, no, the world doesn't necessarily need another clothing company, mm -hmm. but if the clothing company does it better and takes some of that pie away from the other ones, then yeah, it's probably a good thing. I think I remember, um, I was in the Bali where the way all the rubbish and yeah. everything was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I spent I spent a few weeks with your son over there, mm -hmm. Josh over in, in Bali this year. We went over to uh, Sumbawa together. Nice. And, and um, yeah, we, we surfed a lot together. That's um, so awesome. Went to Lake Peak and stayed together in, with a lot too and all that. Yeah, but the garbage situation in Bali is a real, real thing. Luckily, it's starting to get some visibility mm -hmm. and some people, there's a, there's an Instagram account I've been following. Um, I should get you that so we can link it, but they've been doing some really great cleanups in the nice. rivers and, nice. and um, beaches and stuff over there, mm -hmm. like amazing stuff they've been doing. Nice. Okay, so well, let's just turn the corner to, um, <laughs> Um, one thing personally, like I feel like um, that I experienced from you as a friend, you know, like we, we have, you've always, since I've known you, you've always been very respectful to us, to Tony. Um, you've had a lot of respect to Tony always. Um, you know, we didn't get to hang out and do, you know, do, do a lot together, but we always felt, you know, great respect for one another. Um, but one time, um, probably about 10 years ago, um, we were living in the North Shore and you know a lot of things happened in the North Shore, and um, you know you were concerned because of some things you were hearing about mm -hmm. my family. You know, my kids getting into some trouble or 
if it was them or if it wasn't. And um, I guess the word was, you know, there was talk around it, but um, but you came to our house and kind of just like uh, like a good friend, you know, um, out of your concern and love for us. And you said, hey, this is what I'm hearing, you know. And I think that day my whole perception of you changed mm. because um, like a good friend, a person that really is a good friend, um, isn't just there for you when things are good, but they're, they're there when they're concerned, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I just, um, that moment really ch changed my whole perception of you personally, because I felt like um, you weren't, it was not easy for you to come. I know that you probably had to contemplate that moment to come and um, express your concern and, um, but you did. And mm -hmm. like we, we, my husband and I really um, valued that a lot. Yeah. You know, we got to talk it through and, um, you know, make things clear. But, but even in the questions, um, I felt so, um, I really felt like you, you, you would, you protected us, you know, and, 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 and did the hard thing as a friend, you mm -hmm. know, so I just wanted to, you know, and I've thanked you before, but that's always something that um, will always stay in my heart, mm. you know, so thanks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was really special. I remember being in my car calling Tony. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I just want to have this conversation. And I was like, man, this is like, that's kind of thing can backfire, you know, because if you, because like you said, like I've known you guys a long time, but we're not super close, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have dinners all the time mm -hmm. and stuff. We've always been closer since, but like, we have. <laughs> you know, like I think there's an unspoken thing. Like yeah. we could be in each other's houses anytime. Totally. Like, it would be, yeah. It would be great. But um, I remember thinking, oh man, you don't touch someone's family, you know. Mm -hmm. But like, obviously, like, like I've I've always had such respect for Tony since I was a little kid, and I love you guys. So it was sort of an easy decision for me, even though I was like, oh, this could backfire, you know, because mm -hmm. like you you never mess with somebody's kids or something, yeah. and. But if you care about them, you do, yeah. you know, you, you yeah. for the right reasons. Yeah. But that was all just a concern and yeah. something I wanted you guys to, to know about. And I mm -hmm. thought that was a responsible thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think I, I, I felt like I owed that, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and I appreciated but that. But, you know, I think it was, um, you know, it, it was obviously made us a bit closer. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I don't think it was any anything bad whatsoever <laughs> yeah so, that was awesome though yeah. but that's that's one thing about the surfing community that i feel um i always like appreciate it is like you know in the surfing community you might have your little wars yeah. you know but we 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 protect each other you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like we protect each hey, other i think about that a lot with me and andy you know <laughs> yes. it's like it's, it's such a small world you know like yeah there's a lot of crossover very good friends yes and we were like such different people Andy and I, we had, you know, like Shane Doran's like one of my very best friends in this world, but he was very close with Andy. And, and uh, it, you know, at times it was weird. I'm like, gosh, we're so different. How can people that, are, that like me like him or like him uh -huh, like me? Uh -huh. And, um, but, you know, it's just that, it's just that uh, everyone sees a different side to people than you do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, for, for self-protection or, um, whatever you you see something a certain way mm -hmm. and and read it a certain way and uh i look back now and i see things a lot differently than i did then mm -hmm. you know but yeah <laughs> it's uh it's wild it is. <laughs> yeah so speaking of surf and barrels and all that stuff well one of my dreams okay like so i'm a surfer you know right i know how to surf waikiki kinda. shredder i'm a waikiki shredder for a good reason and by the way Look at this waves. This, this is a magical surf. Oh, it's surf. barreling. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come here You come here once in a while, right? When yeah. After tour? Yeah. 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 Yeah, why? To Waikiki? Yeah. Oh, it's Waikiki. fun, you know? Yeah. To me, this is the birthplace of surfing. This mm -hmm. is the, the original. All the pipelines like our Mecca, this is mm -hmm. like, uh, um, what would you call this? I don't know. It's... Um, Jerusalem for surfers or something, Aww. you know, it's like, oh, it's Jerusalem for surfers. Well, I don't know, Diamond Head, you know, it's, it's that, it's that image yeah. you think of when you think of the, the earliest, um, depictions of surfing, mm -hmm. um, with the, the kings, the Hawaiian kings back in the mm -hmm. day. And, 
and um, you know, before there were buildings and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I often think like, well, how, how interesting would it have been if there was never just the buildings in front of Diamond Head? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we should talk about that or whatever, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's because it's such a, it's such a, um, it's visually such a, mm -hmm. such an incredible mm -hmm. place. You could never mistake it for somewhere else. No. And okay. you don't have to be a surfer to know that, but yeah. then uh, you know you see the history and the lineage mm -hmm. um, of all the surfing uh, mm -hmm. from hundreds of years ago to mm -hmm. now, and, and Diamond Head in the background is kind of what you picture. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, but I like to come out here. So, I mean, you know, sometimes it's not so pure. One time we came out here for a friend's bachelor party, and we were drinking alcohol while surfing waves. <laughs> but and taking this is actually funny. It was Shane Dorian's uh, bachelor party. And so we decided, yeah, keep on coming up and we decided to have a few drinks while we served okay. and a couple of us had disposable cameras and we I forget so we kept trading this when we had the old Kodaks before yeah. there were GoPros yeah, yeah. you know yeah so we took a picture of all this like 10 of us on a wave and just laughing and everything and we came up and and uh we were in the showers and we were all just laughing we put the camera down and we just left we left the we lost the camera oh and somebody took it and developed it and knew us and got it back to no us. Way. Yeah, and so we ended oh, up getting these pictures so from cool. Shane's bachelor party. But it was really cool because <laughs> it, was, it was just like an afternoon thing we did. Um, but it was so oh, funny. Wow. We're just running each other over at, cool. at Queens over here. That's sweet. That's good. <laughs> That's pretty pure, I guess. Yeah. A couple beers doesn't yeah. matter. No, we, we we don't suggest you do that. Though. <laughs> so um, from the, nat the the most beautiful and natural place in the world to something quite not real. I mean, you man made. You know, your wave pool. Yeah, like the opposite um, of like the opposite, right, here, yeah. right in the middle of the desert. Right? Cow fields, yeah. Cow fields, yeah. So you you have, um, I mean, and I'm sure you you were. I I could just imagine you like in the middle of like wanting to create this, and then your brain going and thinking like, how would we do it? Like, what would we do? And get like talking to all these engineers and yeah. figuring all that. Like that seems like your that that must have been a really happy place for you. Yeah. I mean, I think you know you love something when you really like you can't sleep at night. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's how this, the mm -hmm. well, surf ranch specifically, but just making waves mm -hmm. uh, in general was for me for so long. Um, we obviously understand the the equation now, but mm -hmm. trying to figure that equation out, you know, it's like back engineering what we want back into how we do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we spent a lot of time talking to scientists mm -hmm. and sort of the, and their their students and researchers mm -hmm. uh, from USC mm -hmm. for a long time. And basically, I, I basically sat down with the, the three head wave scientists at USC and um, and just said, here's what we're trying to do. This is what we want to create. This is kind of the type of wave we want to have. Do you guys have any idea how we do that? Mm -hmm. And so they sat there and talked about it for a while and the, the, the two oldest guys they were I believe in the late 70s early 80s and they sat there and they they were kind of wow. humming and hawing about it and they were they had differing views on it no this is how you do it no this is how you do it and then they they finally came to an agreement okay well those are Kelvin subcritical waves and here's how you make a soliton and, and oh it got all this sort of scientific talk but um that was really fun to see a problem that we had being brought to people who understood mm -hmm. how to decipher it and um, and solve the equation, you know. It and there weren't sort of, surfers, right? They weren't surfers, weren't no. Surfers. And and the scientist we have working for us now, who was one of those, he was the youngest of the oh. of the the professors there. Um, uh, he was probably in his late thirties or forty mm -hmm. years old or something when we started this. And, um, it, and it was that sort of goodwill hunting moment where there's the equation on the on the chalkboard and somebody's got to figure it out and these guys figured it out for That's us. So it was cool. really cool. And I mean, I get a lot of credit for, uh, uh, Oh, you made this wave, but you know, the truth is mm -hmm. the, the devil's in the details and you know, I didn't come up with that equation. Mm -hmm. I just knew what I wanted and they knew how to make it. Yeah. So it was, you know, as a surfer, anyone can go, I want this wave. It looked, it looks like the super bank in Australia mm -hmm. and it breaks in this shallow water <laughs> but to make the swell that hits that thing is a whole different thing that, yeah. you know, was out of, out of my league. Yeah. And, um, but luckily we're, uh, I, and when I, when I embarked on that, I didn't think that I can fit, do this, but mm -hmm. I thought 
I have the networking to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's why I felt not a responsibility to anyone else, but just like to myself, I had this idea and I think I can make it and um, I can sell this vision to the right people. Mm -hmm. And then when they see that, they'll agree that it's valuable mm -hmm. and, it, it, and it's going to be super fun so and, fun. Um, and it, it, valuable meaning like worthy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's been, uh, it's been amazing to, to be able to take friends there mm -hmm. like yourself and you get a request and somebody goes, Hey, I want to get barreled, you know, and yeah. you got barreled. And well, I never got, I've surfed <laughs> since I was 20. So that was like, what, 10 years. But anyways, yeah, I like, surfed since so I was 20. Five years. Yeah, yeah, just five years. <laughs> but I've been surfing for a while and um, I've never gotten barreled. I got close. Like the only close I got was right here at Queens. And Tony was behind me and he was like, pull in, pull in. And I was just like, but I, I heard and it you right. Close your eyes, huh? No, no, I, oh. I don't know. Maybe I did, but I heard it right behind me. I know it wasn't even here. I knew it was here, but I could almost feel that, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. you know, like this. But I didn't get barreled. So I've always wanted to get barreled. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm getting older. I'm gonna get more scared to like get guts in, you know, like even know how to pull in because I surf like way out there instead of back here. And so I was like, when when I <laughs> when I saw that barrel, I was like. It's like I could study it. So I did. I told yeah. you, I studied yeah, yeah. it. I studied it. And I'm watching. I'm like, okay, here, okay, there. I go, ooh, I, was like, I think I could do it because it's the same thing. I don't have to, like, feel yeah. whatever. It's yeah. like I just can study it. So I was like, oh, yo, I really want to go. It's my dream to get barreled before I die. You know, so I uh. shared with them, it's my dream. <laughs> so we get the call one day, and I'm like, yes. And it happened to be the um, contest, right? Yeah. It was right before before was right it a contest right oh no was it, it was contest? in it was in september that we went wasn't it oh i know it was Two a practice section session Maybe, seth yeah. had a practice my son is on around tour that same with, time yeah. yeah with kelly and um there was a practice session and then kelly invited us to his day so not only did we get to go but we got to go with when you were there it was so fun yeah i get a certain number of days every right? year so it, it, those are fun because i i have this like laundry list that i still i don't think i'll Newport ever get thing, through yeah but it um, you know, and like, I want to bring enough people that everyone can get through, but then I want to bring few enough people to where everyone can like, if they're nervous, like some people might be because they've looked at the barrel so many times beforehand. Um, so they can do it over and over, you know, you yeah. can get enough surfing to where you feel like I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I didn't, oh, I didn't get enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want that. So if you, if, if you take, if I take 15 people or 20 people with me, like no one's going to feel like they quite got enough. Yeah. So I like to bring about eight or 10 people and just, yeah. um, and, and I always take a couple of people who've been because they don't need as much. Mm. You know what I mean? I got coached by Ray Mana the day before. I don't know if you noticed. He showed me the thing. But he wasn't there that day But um, that we went out. But he did kind of coach me through it. Where to, you know, where what's doing what. Showed me the reef and mm -hmm. everything. And so I practiced by the bar. You know the bar in my hotel room? I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like bending down because it's kind of an awkward situation you don't want to look like you're like squatting like sumo squat so i'm like does this, does this look cool you know oh, like you're, you're evolving your yeah. barrel riding before you're doing it yeah i had to right <laughs> i had to feel it otherwise i wouldn't be bent down there and i wouldn't get up so i was like practicing muscle memory and then so we went out but i got i got scared like there's a lot of power i mean it was i was very surprised how much power was in the water yeah, yeah. you know because i got to go in the water um, just to experience going under a wave and stuff. And I was just like, whoo. And then you have the chains and that thing, that, that moat thing that pushes the wave. So uh, so much is going on. And I was just like, this is a lot for me. This is like my, this is a lot, a yeah. lot for me. Yeah. And so I rode yeah. all the baby, the Waikiki waves. That was like, when you pay attention to, to the foil. Yeah, the foil. You pay attention to that. That's almost like if you were out surfing waves and you're still paying attention to the storm that made the waves. <laughs> you know up. what I mean? Like, like you get distracted, but well, it's it's a different environment. And you, it's it's such a it's such a strange foreign environment. So you, it, 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 you know, imagine. Uh, I don't know. It's, it, well, it's some people get distracted it's by it. Joel Parkinson when he came was totally nervous and distracted. Really? For like half the day, he couldn't oh, figure it out. You know, and huh. he, one of the best surfers of all time. And, right. I kept going, dude, what's wrong with you? What is, what's going on here? He's like, oh, mate, I'm just so nervous every time the thing starts coming. <laughs> yeah. And he couldn't get his mind out of that. Right. He kept focusing on the wrong oh. thing. And then when he once he loosened up, and uh, he started surfing good. But, oh. you know, for, but Mick Fanning, on the other hand, had it from the first wave. Really? Yeah, just Interesting. didn't think twice, and Mick had it. Huh. So, but, you know, different people. Same with Steph Gilmore. Her first wave, she flew from Africa. 
Got there, first wave, she hadn't slept in like two days. Got there, first wave, got barrel for like 30 seconds. Oh, wow. It was on the old iteration of the wave uh, when it was a barrel the whole way. And uh, so some people can get it right away, and mm -hmm. then some people, it doesn't matter the level. You know, mm -hmm. there have been beginners that, like the guy who works, who owns the, the or who owned the lake next to us, mm -hmm. the wakeboard park, mm -hmm. um, or ski lake. He had never surfed in his life, got up and rode his first wave the whole length of the wave. What? Yeah. Really? Never had surfed in his life. So the he, just, he wasn't, he didn't have this idea in his mind about what he wanted to do. He was like, okay, I'm up. And he, he's riding the wave and he looks at us and goes, I oh, know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so wow. it doesn't matter Nothing the level clouded. or anything. It just, uh, you know, it's different things either. Um, I don't know. It's certain things about it can distract or make people nervous. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot going on there. That's not normal that, you know, and I'm already like, it's normal kinda, now. Yeah, I still can. I can feel it. Like I'm getting all like sweaty. Hannah wants to go back. Thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. I know well, she's had this conversation. I want the wacky key wave. I want to do that over and over again. <laughs> but so this wave, you only get. I mean, I probably had. You know, if, probably... if 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 Josh gets on tour also, then you got two sons that can give you waves on their practice days. They ain't gonna no give me pressure, no waves. No pressure, Seth and Josh. They're but... not gonna give me no waves. <laughs> They're gonna take it all. But so I got. I when I went there, you get to choose. Like there's. Is it three couple, waves? Yeah, a There's like three kind of waves, right? So the first, the wave, one wave is kind of like, I call it a Waikiki wave. I don't know what you like guys call Malibu it. Like a Malibu wave. A Malibu wave. Yeah, kind of just rolls. Just then rolls. Barrel. Waikiki. So it's a Waikiki wave. And then you have the CT2 and the CT3. CT? Is it called? Yeah, yeah. the WCT, like the, a championship tour wave. Some, yeah, so then some of them barrel at certain places, right? Well, I got there and I'm like, ooh, that looks a little too big for mama. So I'm like, I'll just take the the small one. So I, I caught that like probably, I did three waves, I think, or so. So I was like happy. I'm like, you know what? I don't even need to get barreled. Yeah, we're like, I'm, that's cool. We can fly like, all the way back yeah, home to yeah, Hawaii I without getting it too. I know, with it. you know why? Because what's so special about the surf ranch to me, I... You know, there were 10 of us, maybe eight or 10 of us yeah. there. Of, and then it was mostly all your friends, a couple of my friends too. But we are best friends now because of that. Like, it was so fun. The bonding, yeah. The bonding that happens there is yeah. like not anything like it because yeah. it's not anything like it. It's you, funny. You, I love hearing who's there. Like, Kalani Rob's there today. Strider Wasilewski, I think it was just there a couple of days ago. Um, Pat Towers, he punker Pat, if you know him. Aww. He's there today with Kalani. And... Ben Gravy was there yesterday, I think. Aww. So like, I always like, I love hearing because I don't hear from them because it's like it's 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 its own thing now, you know that mm -hmm. people are doing, and I don't know most of the time. I sort of find out by social media. Uh -huh. like, oh, so and so's there. So and so's uh -huh. there. Somebody might tag me, but um, Donovan Frankenrider went with his family, and um, he texted me after. He goes, Kelly, it was the best day of my life with my family. And like nothing better could be no said. No way. Than that. Yes, I I agree. Like yeah. like I would definitely agree that would be the yeah. best day of, of my of our, you know like when you get to do it with friends. It's such a bonding experience. Yeah. Like I and still the number of times I've heard that has been astounding. Of course. We I had a certain um, I had a, a a certain actor friend went one time and I wasn't there, but they FaceTimed me after and he, and uh, and he goes he goes uh, best day of my life no matter what he goes I don't care if you tell my wife. It's better than my wedding day, <laughs> better than the kid day the kids are born. I was like, whoa, dude, slow down. It's all good. I get it. You'll have fun. <laughs> but, you know, people yeah, just get fun. so caught up in yes. what it is. And, yeah. and um, yeah. you know, I, I think there's only one downside to it for me, and that's that it's three or four minutes, three and a half minutes between waves. Yeah. And so there's, we can't just get a high volume of people mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that is that each wave is a bit more special and Absolutely. the ride's 45 seconds long. Mm -hmm. Like there's probably not going to be another man-made wave in the world mm -hmm. that's ever that long. Yeah. It's just kind of overkill. You know, yeah. I think 15 seconds is probably 20 seconds max is all you need. Mm -hmm. But we had this big lake and yes. we had all that water and, and everything that we, we had access to. So yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a that. minute long from the paddling because like, I know. Yeah. I well, have if we run the Waikiki it. wave and you stand up on the very first second and you ride to yeah. the far end on the right, mm -hmm. it's a minute and a half. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't go all that far because I kind of like, it kind of slipped out. I mean, but I did. So the end, I did. So I'm, I'm so satisfied. I'm like, you know what? I don't need to get barreled. I had so much fun. This is amazing. I feel so comfortable. I'm not freaked out and scared. And then, you know, I'm sitting there and then you left. You went to go eat or drink something and you came back and you're like okay Tommy you ready I'm like yes yes I'm ready I'm not ready but just because he said 
I'm like, I can't say, no, I'm not going to do it now. And it's like, we're already, we're all, you know, all the way there. So I should have um, just had like the video of Tony, like pulling in a close out barrel at YMA already. Like, it's not like this, Tammy. <laughs> it's just like this. <laughs> I I just, it felt like that. It felt like that. So I, you know, so I got the privilege and to actually be coached by Kelly. So he goes, okay, I'm going to catch it. And then you're going to catch it and you're going to ride together, ride it together. Behind, I'll be behind. Yeah. So he was riding behind me and he was coaching me. You were coaching me the whole time. And I hope we have a minute so that you can. I know. And she's can, like, shut up. I got this. No, I no. didn't. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm a good student. So I listen to my masa. So I'm going and he's telling me, okay, you know, he's like, you're going to, um, while he's like behind me, I can feel his you know, like I'm just going and he's just like whoosh, right behind my head and he's talking to me at the same time. And he's like, okay, we're going to come here. You're going to, when I tell you it's bent, drop low, drop low. You're going to drop low. Keep your line. Yeah. Keep, keep your line. And that's a, so, that's so good. Like, oh, I was spoken to by that. Drop low, um, keep your line and just, just stay there. Stay on the bottom. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. So he, he says, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. And you were going to pull me. You said you were going to like, go like this or something, slow you down, slow you down. You but he did real. it, yeah. I did it on myself, so <laughs> he just said, go, you know, go low, and, I'm going, and in my mind, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm hearing you, like, you are, like, God, I mean, I'm super obedient, so I'm like, <sighs> and I got there, and I felt it, like, it is the most insane um, feeling to, for me, a barrel, not at Pipe, but at your, your ranch, is almost like a moment where everything stops, you know, like it just goes, oh, yeah, it breathes that slow motion thing, yeah, and it just stops everything mm -hmm. for a second, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the it's over, and then I'm so happy, and then that was awesome. And we had a beautiful day, and you know, I still like have I still um DM some of your our friends that were there, oh, yeah, 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 it's so fun, it's so good. So, <laughs> anyways, we took a long time, I knew it was going to, it was, it's like four. I'll say, I've, look, I've gotten Kalani barreled on that I a couple know. times, right? So I, I learned going doubles, instead of having her up on the nose in front of me, have her stand between my feet and we're turning, we can, I can turn sharper and more, have more control. So, and also like, instead of me being in the tube and her being in the pocket, like we can both be in the barrel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you're on like an eight foot board. Or yeah. I mean, she and I can ride like a seven two together. Really? Yeah. And, well, she's um, so tiny too, yeah. Yeah, but so now we're like one unit turning as opposed to two ah. units doing a long stretch out turn. Because if I make a little mistake and set the tube up wrong, then I'll outrun it real quick or whatever. Uh -huh. But with her as part of my weight, I can stall better nice. and have more control. more control. Yeah, so she and I got an, a, a couple nice barrels. <laughs> We've had some wipeouts too. You know, I told her, I said, listen, <laughs> you're going to have to pay the piper too if we, if we want to get barreled and, and, and get that feeling. Uh -huh. Like, you got to risk having a bad wipeout. Board might hit us, or we might hit the bottom. It Did she freak out, or is she okay? No, she was. She was. She trusted me, and Aww. she was just like, oh, "Whatever, I'll just hold my breath and just wait until you lift me up." And one time we had this wipeout uh -huh. in the middle section. Yeah, we just read the wave wrong, whatever. I didn't get her up quick enough, and we fell and we got sucked over the fall like this. And as we're going up and over the lip, I found her arm, and I just pulled her like to me. But if not, and, and the board hit us too, like the board wow. hit both of us. And then I thought I lost her. And you know, you, you actually, it's really strange how long the wave can hold you down. Yeah, sometimes. that's what everyone says. And you can hit the bottom really hard. Yeah. And um, so I grabbed her and I, and we got held down a long time, but I hit my elbow really hard uh, on the bottom. And I didn't want to let her. You protected her. Yeah, I didn't want to let her know. I, like, I was like, oh, I think I actually got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was like so freaked out when we came up. And I'm like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. What do you mean? Oh, and I'm like, I just yeah, got go smashed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what, is it, was that yeah. the one? Because I remember you posted one day. You guys were so deep yeah, we and totally you were there got, so yeah, long. And I'm like, did you make it? Day, yeah. And you're like, bro, we ate it. Right? Right, we had some wipeouts too. Yeah. But, yeah. But oh. we made one kind of fun and then I was like we can get deeper so we went and the one she posted was the one we got a little deeper yeah on. and she was like oh my god I saw it I like oh, looked up and around and I saw a lip so over here awesome. and, yeah so fun. it's it's a it's a foreign it's definitely a foreign thing for people but she knows surfing well enough she surfed throughout her whole life to mm -hmm. where she she understood the fun in it if you did that with somebody who's never been barreled they might not understand yeah. how difficult how that hard was. it it's is it's like getting a yeah. hole in one the first time you play golf yeah, like, yeah. You know, I've been playing for 30 years now, and I, I, 
I got one about a 70 yard hole. I don't oh. even consider it a hole in one. <laughs> but no, and all those ones I'm trying, it never happens. Uh. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's it, it, it is something that's it's good. It doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. um, you got to go search for it. You know, yeah. we search the world for tubes. Yes. And, um, that's what makes them so special too. Yeah, that's so good. Well, you're special, special friend. Thanks Love for you. joining us. Love you too. And we are here at Servers in Residence. We are with Boyiki. And this is Kelsey. Catch you next month.